continue to, to look back on where we have come from. And we have to continue to proceed to move forward and make progress. Amen. Church, this Lord's Day this is going to be the last, uh, the last part of this lesson, Making Progress. And this last part is titled, The Steps. Growth Step by Step. And you think about when you first uh, become a Christian, a lot of times when, when people get baptized, we, we, uh, we encourage them and we stay on them for a while. And then after a while, we kind of just like let them go. We, we say, all right, we taught you enough now. Now go ahead and go on now. But perhaps that perhaps maybe we should we should continue to to encourage them. We should continue to to stay by their side. We should continue to to help them to grow in godliness. And and you know what? They gave us the exact steps that a person needs to grow by in order to reach the pinnacle of faith that they need to reach. And it gives us it step by step. And and brother Tom read it so so well this morning. If you would turn me there. Uh, to 2 Peter chapter 1. Now I'm going to explain each one of these steps and why that they are the, the step before the other, why there are prerequisites, if you will, to each step in the process towards you having the faith that Christ wants you to have. In 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 4, it says, By which are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. He's, we've made some promises so that you can get your eternal life. That's what he's saying. He said, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, you have, you have escaped what the world has tried to encapsulate you in, and, and you have stepped outside of those barriers of living just for the lust of your flesh, living just to please whatever your flesh wants, and you focus on spiritual needs instead. That's what he's saying here. And he's saying, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. See, faith is the foundation of everything. Because if you don't believe what God has said, there's no way you're going to take the first step. So faith is the first thing that you need to have. And faith is the only thing you need to have in order to be baptized. Right? If you believe and, and you know what you believe, faith comes by hearing, right? You understand what it is that you believe. You do all the five steps and then you're baptized. Then you start on your journey. So you don't have to know everything about the Bible when you first get baptized. That's impossible. That's impossible. You're not going to know and understand everything. But when you're baptized, you become a babe. Christ and he's given you the steps that you need in order to grow. So when you get when you become a Christian, he said, add to your faith virtue. Now, this word virtue is translated into English from a word that means to have to have courage. So so you you believe everything and we get people to this point, right? We get them to the point of belief. They believe we we preach to them, we taught them. They say, "You know what? You got a point there. I never saw that. You know, I never looked at that myself. I just believe what Pastor Bob I said. I just, I just believe what they said. You got a point. You know, I believe you. But do they have the courage to take the step forward? That's why he said add to your faith virtue. Because they can believe all day. They can believe it all day. But are they going to leave the, the church that, that they've been in their whole lives or all their family in and and, and go to the one that they believe is right based on what the Bible says and get ridiculed by their family and, and, get, and, and get tormented by, by them saying, why are you over there? Do they have the courage to take the step? You know, church, we ought to give people credit for starting something because, because it takes courage to start something new. Oh boy, it takes some courage to start something new. You know what? A lot of dreams that we have are never accomplished because we don't, you never even take the first step. You're so scared of failing that you don't even take the first step to making your dream come true. Well. You may, maybe you, you, you wanted to, to swim and you came and you dipped your foot in the water and, and the water was cold. So you just said, nah. No, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not going to do The water was too cold. 
But you forgot that, that after you, you jump in the water, just a few seconds later, your body will adjust to the temperature. And you'll be able to enjoy yourself swimming. You could have enjoyed swimming and, and relaxing in the water, but the first dip was too cold and it, it turned you away. You didn't have the courage to get past the first bump. You could, have, you could have reaped the benefits of your dreams, but you lacked the courage to start the journey. So that's why he said, add to your faith virtue. And remember, this, ver this word virtue is translated from a, 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 a Greek word that means courage. It means courage to have courage, to, to be able to fight through all of the obstacles that might come in your way. You know, you, you, some people try to start a business. And, and the sales aren't going that well. And everybody's like, man, you, you put so much money into it. Just, just count your losses and just stop. Just, just quit the business right now. You, you might try to be an entrepreneur and, and, and they say, you know what, just, just, just give up. It's not working out. Just go get a job, man. Just, just go get a job. Forget about your dream of doing this. Just, just go get a job. You try to be a, a new creature in Christ, and, and people want to bring up your past. Oh, you're a Christian now. I remember when you used to do this. Well. But you done changed your life, huh? See, people, people discourage you when you try to start a new thing. It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing because we're designed to all be faithful. Now, change is not accepted. Like I said, because it's natural. What we, what we were created to do is we were created to come together and be of one faith and everybody, everybody be together and, and every, everything be going well. And then if change comes, then change is naturally rejected because what we are already living in is godliness. That's why change is rejected naturally because we were created to follow God. So when we all follow God and somebody tries to change what we already follow, we reject it naturally. But what's happened is the world has been turned upside down. So now most people are not following God's way. And then when somebody goes to try to follow God's way, that change is rejected. That's why we should give people credit when they try to start something new. When they try to take a step, it takes so much courage. It takes so much strength to fight against all the things that everybody says about you when you try something new. But don't give up. Pretty don't give up. This is the step-by-step -step way. He said, add unto your faith virtue. Mm -hmm. And he said, and to your virtue, knowledge. And this is the, just knowledge. You just need to, to learn how to run the race. Remember, Paul described life as a race. He described life as a race. And when you finish running the race, you receive your crown of glory. You receive eternal life. See, you don't ever set forth doing something unless you actually know how to do it, right? You, have, you ought to study how to do something before you start, right? The, the first step is to gather courage. That's the virtue. And the determination to make the journey. The second step is to study and to learn how to do it. You might go and, and read up on, on how, how, I, how I'm going to win this race, how, how other people trained in order to, to win, how other people's training regimens, I read up on that and see how they do it, and then I start my own, and then I learn along the way, and then all of a sudden I have the knowledge that I need in order to succeed. So the second step is to learn how to do it. So the foundation of faith comes from that understanding. And that understanding is getting the knowledge that you need to move forward. And see, you know, we ought to be hungry. We ought to be hungry for the bread of life. Every day. We ought to be thirsty for the everlasting water, for that living water. We would see people that, that are hungry and thirsty for the, for the word of God, they tend to, to, to go through this process a lot easier. Because God told them how to do it. It's like trying to assemble a bicycle and not reading the directions. Yeah. You're going to have a hard time. Maybe you'll figure it out. 
Maybe you figure out along the way, you keep on trying and, and it's hard and, and eventually you get it. But all you had to do what? was read the instructions. <laughs> yeah. So, so God has given us this manual for life. He's created us and, he's, and he knows exactly what we need and he knows exactly what we ought to do. So we said, he said, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So after you start, you start feeding yourself with the bread of life and the living water, you, you'll begin to be able to make these steps a lot easier. So the next step for that new Christian and to knowledge, self-control or temperance. You have to be able to, to hold yourself in. You have to be able to control yourself. You can't just do what you want to do when you get mad. You have to control your temper in the face of adversity. See, anger is not an excuse to sin, church. Some people believe that. Some people believe that if I get mad, I can just do what I want for a second because I got mad and God will just forgive me and it's all right. Uh -uh. Well, it's, it's all right. I got mad. I, I cussed him out and punched him. And, you know, I was mad. It's because I was mad. I, I, I know. Yeah. Can't be it's self-control and temper is necessary in order for you to inherit the promises. That's what he said here in verse 4. He says, great and precious promises that by these might be partakers of the divine nature. Now he's going down a list of things. He, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to have some self-control, church. And see, the flesh, the flesh wars with the spirit. The flesh wants to want do one thing. Your, your mind telling you, telling you, no, nah, don't do it. I don't even want to reference this song because because the because the artist is is no good. But my mind is telling me no. <laughs> exactly. That's what happens. But my body is telling me yes. You know you ought to be doing this thing. You know you ought to be to be uh, being productive with your time. But but you would rather put it off for another day. Right, and your mind is saying, you know what? I should, I should be more productive with my time. I shouldn't be, you know, just sitting here watching TV. Maybe I should go and do this. Maybe I should go and do that. You know, I have this this thing that I wanted to do, this dream. Maybe I should take a step and and do some studying and and work on that. But but it feels good to sit down, don't it? <laughs> Even alone. Now. It feels it feels good to to get some rest in, man. You know, I, I work hard all day. You know, I just I'm gonna just sit down and then and then all of a sudden it's it's months. You haven't even started on your project. Exactly. The flesh wars with the spirit. Every day. You know, and, and then it, the other thing, you know, you shouldn't be doing this thing. You know, you ain't got no business doing this. But but you but your but your flesh says, you know, just one time. Just just one time, it'll be all right. You know, this just one one time won't hurt. That's what it says, don't you? Sometimes we give in to it. Just one time. It's just not. You haven't, man. You haven't sinned in like a year, man. You just, come on, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Got to do something now. <laughs> come on, you. Just, God, forget. Come on. No, whatever. The flesh wars with the spirit, trying to get you to Every do day. things to please it, but you have to fight against it. Every day. You have to have self-control. So after you had the virtue, after you have your faith and you add to it virtue, which is the courage to take the step forward, then you have self-control, which is in the, in the face of adversity, you still keep going. And now you need perseverance. Perseverance. It says, add to, and, and to patience, I'm sorry, and to patience, godliness. So you add to your, your patience, I'm sorry. And sorry, you add to your uh, your self control, patience, which in the translation means perseverance. You never give up. You endure to the end. And, and the patience and the perseverance and the self control they go together. And see, with patience comes self control. And you know this can only be learned through experience. The only way you can get patience and perseverance is to have to go through some things. Which is why sometimes God allows us to go through some storms in order for us to come out stronger than we were before. You know, and you know what? You need to ask yourself a question when you're going through these storms. It says, you know, who, when, you, when times of trouble come, who do you become? Let's listen to that one more time. When, when times of trouble come, who do you become? And then you 
need to ask yourself, do I like that person? Well, yeah. Do I like the person that I become when I get upset? Do, would I be friends with the person that I become when I get upset? Because that's part of you. Oh yeah, that's a part of you. Do you like that person? Would you would you would you stay around that person? No, oh no. If the answer is no, then you need to change them. Uh, <laughs> and that, that that experience comes with, with, with ex that, that comes with experience. It comes with having to deal with some things. And now that you've learned how to deal with difficult situations, you have to keep doing it. See, see. The self-control comes with learning how to deal with situations. You've learned how to deal with situations. Okay, this is what I have to do when trouble comes. This is what I have to do. But see, what happens is you know what you're supposed to do, but at times you get tired yes. of doing that. Yes. You get tired of doing that. Then you want to quit. And that's why he said first comes self-control and then comes patience because you need the patience to continue to do goodwill, right? Don't grow weary in well-doing. So now that you've learned how to deal with those difficult situations, keep doing it. It's not gonna just stop. Church is not going to, your, your, the situations that are happening to you right now, the bad things that you have to deal with, they're not just going to stop one day. I'm telling you, it's not just going to stop. You're going to have to continue to deal with situations over and over again. But you just got to keep going. You just got to push through because that, that goal, that, that crown of life at the end, church, that's it, that's I'm it. telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it, church. It, it doesn't work like this. They, well, well, let's see here. Um, Brother Gavin has has had about nine, 197 difficulties. Are you sure that's on file? Yes, 197 difficulties. So you know that our company policy is that once he reaches 200 difficulties, his life becomes perfect. Okay, after he has a certain amount of difficulties, that's it. That's not how it works, church. That's not how it works. You're going to continue. Things are gonna pop up. You're gonna, have, you're gonna be having a great life. God is gonna be blessing you. And then all of a sudden, here comes the devil. Right there. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. But church, don't grow weary in well-doing. You can't quit. There is strength in dealing with stress, but it takes even more strength to continue to deal with it time and time again. Don't quit. Persevere. That's why he said, he that overcomes he that overcomes, he that endures till the end, him will receive a crown of life. So to your patience, you add godliness. And this word godliness is translated from a Greek word that means deep reverence and respect towards God. That's what this word godliness means here. Deep reverence and respect towards God. Think about in, in relationships. In relationships, after after you've been through some things, foundation is built. After you have endured so many hardships that you've gone through, what happens is you have this deep bond with this person that can't be broken. And that just comes with years and years of experience and sticking it through with that person. See, the, the roots are strong in the tree of your love after you have gone through a few storms. Mostly because of the, the bond formed, once again, after many, many battles. And you see, see, God is fighting by your side through the battles that you're going through. Okay. You know, the Bible says that he always provides a way out. And through, through your temptations, he always provides a way out. There's always a way for you to escape the temptations that you go through. So, so who is providing that way out? Of course, it's God that's providing that way out. So he has been fighting with you through the temptations that you are going through in your life. And, and through, this bat, through these battles, through these tribulations, and after you have overcome these things, your relationship with God grows because you then see what he has done for you. 
So that's why godliness is so laid down the list. Because when you first get baptized, you need to establish your faith, and then you add to your faith virtue, which is the courage to move forward. Because a lot of people get baptized and then you'll never see them again. They didn't have the virtue, they didn't have the courage to continue to strive towards their perfect faith. That's why it's so late in the list, because you have to learn, you have to gain the knowledge, then you have to have the self-control, then you have to have the patience to continue to, to exert self-control. And then after all of that comes the deep reverence for God, because you've gone through all these things. You've, you've managed to make it through. You've developed some patience, and you understand that God has been there for you. So then you, you develop the deep reverence and respect towards God. When you're able to look back and see where God has brought you from, you begin to have that deep reverence and respect. You begin to become godly. That's what it means to be godly. And then after this, he says, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. So after you have learned all these things, after you have gone through the trials and tribulations, and you understand that God has helped you, now you need to develop brotherly kindness. Now, this is, this is different from the, from the agape love that's listed after this. As a matter of fact, Brother Tom, if you would um, give me uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Brotherly kindness is, there's a special kinship towards brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what, when, when the Bible says brotherly kindness, it's not, it's not talking about everybody. When it says love and charity, and, and when he says love your enemies, and he says love, when he's talking about love, that means everybody. You are still required to love everybody. But there's a special kinship that is talked about in the Bible that you should have towards your brothers and sisters in Christ. Did you know that you're supposed to have a special relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ? What does Romans chapter 12 verse 10 say? Be kindly, affection, one to another. One to another. Who is he talking to in Romans chapter 12? He's talking to the church. He said one to another, read. With brotherly love. With, and, and what did he say? Brotherly love. So here that brotherly kindness and brotherly love is talking about here. It's talking about the relationship that you have with the members in the church. Read. And honor, preferring one another. Wait a minute. He said preferring one another, preferring one another. So I should prefer my brother and sister in Christ. I should want to do good unto them first. There's a special Relationship, Brother Tom, you will get me first John chapter 4 and verse 20. We'll move on. There, there's a special relationship that you need to have with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Church, if, if my brother and sister in Christ is in trouble, I need to come running. I need to come running. You want to know another reason why? Because Christ said that they, meaning people in the world, they will know you if you love one another. They will be able to see me in you by how you treat each other. Sometimes people come here and they look for that. They hear the word and they believe it, but they're looking around at me and you. Oh, let me see. Let me see how he treats how he treats her. Did when when he, when he when she reached out her hand to shake it, did he just kind of did he did he just kind of shake it and look the other way and kept walking her? Or did, or did he did he actually stop there and give her a smile? How, how are they treating one another? Because if I want to be a member of this congregation, I want to be a part of some love. Every day. Oh yeah, you best believe they're watching, looking at how you treat the next person. What does First John chapter four and verse twenty say? Four twenty. Yes. If a man say. I love God and has and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Yes, sir. 
For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? We have to love our brothers. And I, I don't, we don't really have time to get into this, but, but there's another scripture that, that teaches us that we have to do good unto the members of the church first. Right? If, 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 if we have, if, if we have a, therefore opportunity, do good unto all men, especially to those of the church. Amen. Especially. So we have to have a special relationship with the brothers and sisters in Christ. I want us to understand that. I want us to understand that. And we'll move on to the next part. It says, in the next part we have agape, the agape love. The agape love. It says, add unto your brotherly kindness, love. Add unto your brotherly kindness, charity, which is the love, the agape love, the love everybody. The love everybody. It's, it's easy to, to have a relationship with people that have like minds, right? It's easy to, to love somebody if they're always good to you. But it, it, it's difficult. This, that's why this is listed last, church. That's why this agape love is the last thing on the list of progress. Because it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to do to actually love people that don't care nothing about you. It's the that's why it's the last thing on the list. It's hard, brother. And and that includes the people that go out of their way to hurt you. I know you've dealt with it. Yeah. People that, that, that want to see, want nothing else but to see you cry. But to see you suffer. They're waiting for that phone call. Oh, such and such, man, they're in jail. What? What you say? Exactly. Give me some more. What happened? Got a smirk on their face. They want nothing more than to see you hurt. Yep. They lost their house? What? Uh -uh. Really? What happened? Yeah. Give me some more. That's why it's the last thing on the list, church. Even those people, even those people that hate your guts, you still have to love them. Now, does that mean that I have to deal with them? <laughs> no. Does that, does that mean I have to go out of my way to go and see them? No, you know, you know what this agape means? It means that I want the best for them. Even though you hate me, I still want to see you in heaven. I still don't wish hell upon you. I still want you to have eternal life. My churches, I know it's hard, but I don't really wish hell upon anybody. Once you actually have a full understanding of hell, no matter how much you dislike somebody, I can't bring myself to want somebody to go there. It is a horrible, yeah. wretched place. Yeah. So church, we have to have this agape love. We have to love everyone. We have to put the well-being of, of another person above ourselves. And like I said, it's easy to love somebody that's, that's in the church. It's easy to love somebody that, that has the same mindset as you. But what happens when you come into contact with people that don't? How do you treat them? That's why this is the last, last part, church. It's the hardest thing to do. Even your enemies, you have to love them. Everything else leads up to this. And once you understand this, that's why it says love covers a multitude of sins because this is the main step. Once you learn how to do this, everything else comes easy. But you have to build up to this. You have to follow the steps to reach this point. And you know what? I, I want to challenge you when we have some new converts to go through these steps with them and, and teach them, hey, listen, this is where you need to be looking. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 through 10, these are the steps okay. that you need to follow. This is your guidance book here. Explain it to them. Say, this is what this word means. This is your first step. 
So let's work on this first. Then after you get done with that, here is the next step. And here is the next step. And I, and I wonder if we, we won't see them just disappear the next week. I wonder if they might stay here a little longer. Okay, let's keep reading. It says, but he that lacketh these things. Yeah. He that lacketh these things, verse 9, is blind and cannot see afar off. And he hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And listen to this promise. This is this is this is what we're closing up here. Wherefore the, the wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I said this in the first part, but it's important, church. In order to make your calling and your election sure, follow these steps. Follow these steps. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly love, and to brotherly love charity. If you follow these steps, he said, this will make your calling and election sure. Church, that's powerful. I, I want to be sure that when the time comes that I'm going to make it in. Amen. It says, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. Oh yeah, we know them. We've heard them a hundred times probably. But it says, put you in remembrance. Those are the same words that Christ said, in remembrance. We know what Christ did, so why do we need to have, why do we need to do it in remembrance of him? Because we forget sometimes, church. It says, in remembrance, we need to be constantly reminded of these things so that we can constantly press towards the goal to constantly make progress and remembrance of these things that you know them and are established in the present truth. Yeah, I think it's fitting as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off my tabernacle even as the Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. So he's talking about he's going Paul, or, or Peter was saying that, that he's going to put off his tabernacle meaning his fleshly body meaning that he was going to die soon. But he wanted to tell you, listen, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do in order to be sure of your everlasting life. And, and the last scripture that we look at this, this, uh, this morning is Psalm chapter 92 and verse 12. It says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord those that be planted in the house of the Lord, church, in uh, 1 Timothy 3.15, the house of the Lord is the church of Christ. Look at that later. Look at that later. 1 Timothy 3.15, the house of the Lord is the church of Christ. He's making a, a reference to the church of Christ back in the Old Testament. The house, those that, that, that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still, listen to this, they shall still Bring forth fruit when? In old age. <laughs> yeah. They shall still make progress in old age. Still bringing forth fruit. Still making progress. Still growing, church. Exactly. It says they shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright. Why are they why are they making progress still when they're old? Why are they still doing this? It says to show that the Lord is upright. It doesn't matter how old you are, God will still bless you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to show that the Lord is upright, to show that He still will care for you. It says, He is my rock. Amen. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness. Church, this is the last part of, of the lesson uh, of making progress. I, I, I hope that you got a blessing from this lesson. This is something that we can we can always teach our new converts. The steps that they need to follow in their journey. The, the beginning of their journey to the end of their journey. And it's all mapped out for you in God's word. Uh, 
If there's, if there's anyone that has any need whatsoever, if you desire the prayers of the church, or if you would like to become a Christian, you come by hearing, believing, repenting of your sins, making a confession.